Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I will be analyzing the company of Sobos Brands, which if everything goes as planned, it should be going public this upcoming September 22nd, 2021 in the Nasdaq under the ticker symbol SOVO. As always, my aim with this video will be to analyze several different aspects of the company based on their S1 filing, which is publicly available. And by the way, if you want the link to it, it will be just down below in the description. And afterwards, if you enjoy the video, you think that the company is interesting, you like it, you can go ahead and you should go ahead and do your own due diligence on it. Anyways, before I start with the content of the video, let me quickly give you a short overview of the main topics that I will be covering today. Firstly, I will start with a general introduction and we will also look at some general metrics of the company. After that, we will quickly have a look also at the industry and the competitors, followed as always by the financials, and we will compare those of several brands with two other competitors, which are BNG Foods and Campbell Soup Company. After that, we will also analyze the IPO price and the valuation, and we will also compare the valuation of Sovos brands with those two competitors that I just mentioned now. And finally, as always, I will be giving my personal opinion on the company and my future plans with it. With that said though, and after I remind you that if you enjoyed the video, it would be super awesome if you could give it a like, and please also consider subscribing if you want to see more IPO related videos. But with that said, let's go for it. Soros Brands is a US food company that is mostly focused on acquiring and building disruptive growth brands, what they call one-of-a-kind brands within the food industry. Currently, the company owns four different brands. Rouse, Nosa, Birch Benders, and Michelangelo's. Since the company is basically just the sum of these four different brands, I will now just quickly describe each one of them. Rouse is the largest brand of all of them and accounts for 55% of the total sales of the company. It offers basically tomato sauces for pizza and pasta, although they recently also entered into the soups category. Not only it is the one with the highest share, but it is also the best performing of all of them. And in the graph in the screen, you can see that since Sovos Brands acquired it, the dollar sales have 4x and it has gained substantial market share in the pasta and pizza sauce category, becoming the number two brand. And just in the past year, the dollar sales have increased in 42% and it is present in around 1,000 distribution points, while several of its competitors have many more, showing that the brand still has room for growth. Michelangelo's is the frozen complement of Rouse and its sales represented a 12% out of the total. It is focused on Italian entrees like lasagna among others. Then we have Noza, which competes in the yogurt category and its sales represented 24% out of the total. It was acquired in 2018 when the company itself was not doing that well, there were a lot of competitors and so on, but now Sovos Brands has managed to turn it back into growth mode. Then we have Bridge Benders, which represents only 9% of the total sales and offers pancake, waffle and cake mix. This one though is the latest acquisition that they made. If we look at the timeline of acquisitions, the first one of the company was in January of 2017 of Michelangelo's, then in July of that same year they acquired Rouse, in November of 2018 Noza, and the last one we mentioned was in October of 2020 with Birch Benders. Finally, on the brands, the household penetration of them is very low still, especially of Birch Benders and Michelangelo's. Overall though, we see that they are a pretty diversified food company with 49% of the sales from sauces, 3% of soup and pasta, 24% of yogurt, 17% of frozen entrees and waffles, and 7% of pancake and waffle mix. On distribution, they mostly use retailers, although for some of its products, it's also possible to buy them directly online. On retailers, the largest ones that they work with include Walmart, Costco, Kroger, Safeway or Target. And additionally, as you might have already guessed, they solely do business within the US. Let's talk and understand now though how the company was created and what its plans for growth moving forward. In terms of creation, the company is backed by Advent International Corporation, which is a private equity firm. This means that all the acquisitions that they have done, the money has come from this corporation and then essentially they build Sovos brands to kind of like manage all these different companies within the food industry that they were buying. And this means that actually after this public offering, uh, Advent International Corporation will own approximately 64% of the total company, which means that they ha will have complete control over what happens with the company itself. And that brings me perfectly to the second point of growth moving forward. 
On it, as I stated at the very beginning, their main focus is on acquiring other food brands. But not just any brands, as these brands need to have the following characteristics. It needs to taste delicious, of course, simple and high quality ingredients, ability to support premium pricing, high consumer affinity and leading net promoter score, so satisfaction of customers, attractive category dynamics and opportunity to disrupt category and total addressable market white space and underdeveloped household penetration and brand awareness. Ultimately, the target customer is young and family oriented with higher disposable incomes, passionate about taste and quality, values clean ingredients and have higher basket sizes. So with this, we see that they target premium brands that still have room for growth and they are not at all concerned about pricing or they are not trying to fight for lower prices but instead for higher quality of the product itself. But what actually happens when a new brand is acquired? Well, they focus on four different aspects to make it grow more. The first of these is to increase distribution. Secondly, expand brand awareness. Thirdly, improve sales and marketing execution. And fourth, innovate into new categories. I think that all of them are pretty self-explanatory, but for instance, in the case of Rouse, what they did was that the brand itself already had mostly sauces, and now they expanded into the category also of of soups which they launched also relatively recently and in the case for instance of Nosa what they did was to create a different packaging that was smaller so that more people would decide to buy the product just to try it and see if they liked it. Finally, before moving into the competitors, in terms of manufacturing, they have two manufacturing facilities, one which is in Texas that mostly does products for Rouse and Michelangelo's, and then another one in Colorado, which is for Noza yogurts. And then for the rest, they have co-packaging agreements with many other suppliers, which are basically producing the products for them. Going into the industry, as Sovo Brands owns four different brands operating within different segments of the food industry, I won't be going one by one explaining the projected growth and so on, as I feel like I have better things to explain in this video and more interesting ones. But overall, the food industry in general is expected to see continued growth, not massive one, but sustained one. And then what is important though to acknowledge is that Sovo Brands faces a lot of competition. It is in a highly competitive industry Something that you can easily see when you go to the supermarket, to the grocery store, and you see how many brands there are just to buy a tomato sauce or yogurts or many other products. And in terms of competitors, if we focused on similar companies to Sovos Brands, which is basically a holding company that owns several different food brands, we have many other multinationals like for instance B&G Foods, Barilla Holding, Campbell Soup Company, General Mills, Nestle, Kraft Heinz or many others. And on top of that we should also consider that each of the individual brands of Sovo Brands also is competing with other dire competitors. For instance, Noza Yogurts directly comp competes with the brand of Danone. For the continuation of this video and also for the competitors used to compare the financials and the valuations, I selected B&G Foods and Campbell Soups as both of them are publicly traded and they have more or less similar models to the ones of Sovo Brands. In the case of B&G Foods, it owns more than 50 different brands so it's much larger in size. It is also family oriented in terms of products of great tasting and of high quality, which is kind of like the same message that Sovos Brands tries to transmit. And then Campbell Soup Company also owns many different brands and competes mainly in soups, sauces and prepared pasta. Before that though, let's go and check out the financials of Sovo Brands. And starting with revenues, we only have data from 2019. But the growth was nice at 44.35% last year. And this year for the estimation, I just took what they made during the first six months and multiplied it by two, although it is likely that they end up doing more. If this were to be the case, they would grow at 25% this year. These growth numbers though need to be taken with caution as they are not just from organic growth but also from the acquisitions of Noza and Birch Benders. So basically the numbers at the moment look good in terms of growth but this is highly derived from the acquisitions. Then looking at the net incomes during the past year, they were already profitable and this year it seems like they will too if they keep on track with what they have made already during the first six months. 
And then looking at the balance sheet, at the end of 2020, the debt ratio was of 47.88%, which was good, but at the end of June this year, the debt ratio stood at 81.88% as they took more long-term debt, which is a bit too high in my opinion. The good thing though is that with the IPO, they will bring, down, they will bring it down as they will issue more shares and pay down debt, but still it's something to keep in mind. Now it's time to compare the financials with those of the two competitors that we mentioned earlier on. And firstly, starting with revenues, we see that Sovos Brands is still much smaller in size than the other two, which also explains the higher growth rate. And then on profitability, they all seem to be profitable at the moment, although Campbell's subcompany has much higher net income margins than the rest. Before we also compare the valuations, let's look first at that of Sovo Brands. On it, based on the information I have available at the moment of preparing this video, its IPO price is projected to range between $14 and $16 per share, and taking the amount of shares outstanding after the offering and the sales and profits for the past year, we have a price to sales ratio of 2.7 times and a P ratio of 139.8 times. But since we are already well into the year, if we take the estimated sales and profits for this full year 2021, which all I did was to multiply whatever they had made during the first six months by two, we would have a forward price to sales ratio of 2.15 times and a forward PE ratio of 72.95 times earnings. Especially on a PE basis, this is pretty expensive for a food company. If we compare it with the two competitors from earlier, we have that BNG Foods trades at a PE of 14.74 times and Campbell Soup Company at 13.06 times. This means that Sovo Brands will start trading at around 10 times more expensive than these two other competitors. And yes, I'm aware that the growth ahead of Sovo Brands is higher than the other two. Still though, I think that it is a bit too expensive in my opinion. Especially because the current growth projections is for Sovo Brands to continue acquiring new companies. And given that its profits are still not significant enough to be able to pay for acquisitions, if they want to acquire more companies, either they will have to issue more shares or they will have to get on more debt. If they get more debt, they risk being over leveraged and then putting the company in a risky situation if something goes bad. And if they issue more shares, the shareholders, the current shareholders won't be very happy because they will of course be diluted. So in all of this, what is my final take on this IPO? Personally, I won't be investing in it, at least not at the IPO price. My reasoning for not doing so is that, generally speaking, food companies don't experience massive growth and the companies that they are buying are companies that have been operating already for many, many years, so it's not like they are completely brand new and even if they do different strategies, marketing and so on, as I said, generally speaking, food companies don't grow that much. For instance, out of the brands that they have, it is true that Roas and Birch vendors have experienced pretty significant growth during the past years, but then we have a brand like, for instance, Noza, that only experienced a 3% growth during the past year, which is quite insignificant and not enough to justify its current valuation. And then we have the part of the acquisitions, which is that part of the growth that the company should have needs to come from acquisitions because from organic growth, I don't think that they will be able to sustain a 15%, 20% growth just from organic sales of the brands that they keep acquiring. And if they do want to make more acquisitions, as I already mentioned previously, either they will have to issue more debt, which is something that I don't really like. I mean, they still have margin, especially after going with the IPO, since they will have a lot of cash and so on. But this can reach up to a certain point. And depending on how big the company is, they might not have enough. And then, of course, what I think that will happen is that this company, the private equity firm of Admin International Corporation, will end up also buying the other companies and in order to do so probably the company will issue more shares and dilute the current shareholders. Anyways, please remember that everything I shared in this video is based on my research, my calculations, which of course could be wrong, and my opinion, which again could be wrong. So the fact that I'm not investing in it does not mean that it cannot turn out to be a great investment. Anyways, I just want to leave very clear that I'm no financial advisor of any kind, and you should always, always, always do your own due diligence. With that said though, what are your thoughts on Sovo Brands? Do you like the company? Will you be investing in it during the IPO? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you are not yet subscribed, and as always, see you next time.